is my great pleasure to welcome you to the fourth uh, Wangari Matai Award ceremony. Once again, this award will be given to an outstanding advocate for local people, good governance, local rights, and sustainable use of forest resources. And without further ado, I will call to the stage the chair of the Collaborative Partnership on Forest, Mr. Hiroto Mitsugi, who is the Assistant Director General for Forestry in FAO. Hiroto. Collaborative Partnership on Forest, for those who, of you who are not familiar with it, which consists of 14 major global forest-related international organizations that work together for the world's forest and for the peoples who depend on them. So since its establishment in 2001, the CPF has been collaborating on the several so front to help countries in their effort towards the sustainable management of all types of forest and trees. So CPF is also deeply engaged in contributing to the progress towards achieving the sustainable development goals of the 2030 agendas. So although we represent international organizations, so we are fully aware of how important stakeholders are in managing forest. So as it is increasingly recognized in various forums, so stakeholders' involvement participatory approaches, and good governance, enabling legal, institutional, and also financial frameworks. The, these are key not only to the sustainable forest management, but to sustainable development in general. So while humanities depend on the forest in general, so we have to acknowledge that the level of dependence the differs in different parts of the world and even within societies. So overall, 2.4 billion people use the forest for meeting the basic energy needs. At least 1.3 billion people depend on the forest for their housing, and 800 million people are engaged in forestry activities, and 60 million people can be considered as forest-dependent communities. So these numbers illustrate that no success can be achieved without the contribution of stakeholders, the peoples. And where does this contribution start? So at the grassroots in the communities. So it is exactly why CPF to took these initiatives in the, after the sudden and the sadly premature passing of Wangari Marais, so which to join forces to recognize the legacy of these great community leaders, so fearless advocate of forest and peoples, and also wonderful, inspiring human being through the award, so which was established in her names and given for the first time in 2012. This is the first time that award is presented. And I am sure you all agree with me that the Global Landscape Forum is perfectly venue for this. So because this award is not only about celebrating the lifetime achievement of Wangari Marais, but also about recognizing her followers, the community leaders of the present and the futures so we need to find and recognize everyday heroes and help their exemplary achievement be com communicated. So that, uh, so that others could take inspiration from them and follow this path or even open new ones. So we got great nominations for the 2017 award and the international jury presenting the six regions of the world had a challenging but noble task to select these winners. In a short while, you will all see how wide that jury was. But before introducing the winner of the award, on behalf of all CPF members, I would like to thank you for joining us to celebrate this moment and celebrate the winners and remember Wangari Maharaj. Thank you very much.
Now we are going to watch the movie which is a tribute to Angari Matai. People do not know how much they depend on the survival of this ecosystem. So when people say they want to come in and cultivate, or they want to come in and grow commercial plantations, I know that they are digging their own graves. This ecosystem must remain as it is, it must be sustained, because in its survival, depends our own. Wangari Madai was the first woman in East and Central Africa to obtain a PhD. During her time at Nairobi University, she began to notice a great deal of deforestation. At the same time, women in her community were complaining about lack of firewood and water. She was not only a visionary, but a pioneer. What she was saying through her work and her life was that the two, poverty and environmental sustainability, were two sides of the same coin. Wangari quickly made the connection between the two and started women's groups planting trees. Today, because of Wangari Mathai, an environmental consciousness has taken root and many more hectares of land are being planted with trees, forming an environmental green belt across nations and contributing to a greener, cleaner planet. She blazed a trail for women's rights, for democracy, and most of all, for a green environment. And her desire that we plant a billion trees has got to be taken on by all her friends so that it is achieved in the very near future. The movement started as a tree planting campaign, but it was a lot more than just the planting of trees. It gave people a reason to stand up for their rights. Their environmental rights, their women's rights, and their human rights. The little, little grassroots people, they can change this world. Initially, the women's groups were ignored because nobody took them seriously. But soon the government realized that the women were being organized and becoming more and more powerful. In 1992, Wangari organized a hunger strike in Uhuru Park to push the government to release political prisoners. The women, attacked by the police, refused to give up and continued their protest for 11 months. Moi's government finally conceded to their demands and released the prisoners. I'll always remember her as a tireless advocate for social justice and human rights, an exceptional leader, a woman demanding equal treatment for all. When President Moi was discovered to be giving away public land, parts of Karura Forest, to politicians in his government, Wangari decided to fight the development. Wangari, unafraid, decided to protest peacefully through a tree planting mission. She never did anything to please. She never did anything because she wanted to be popular. She did everything she did because she always felt it was the right thing to do. That was a constant in her life. It's a very sad saga that we have a government in this country that is actually overseeing the destruction of forests and the grabbing of public land. If you're going to shed blood because of our land, we will. We are used to that. Our forefathers shed blood for our land. We will do so. This is my blood. And I, it, it reminds me of the blood that Wayaki shed, trying to protect Karura Forest. 
Her indomitable spirit enabled her to transcend barriers of every kind and description to inspire the rest of us to walk in her footsteps. The peace we don't have quite often in many places is because we have destroyed these resources. Sometimes we are just violent against each other. Human beings is a strange species because sometimes it turns on itself and destroys itself. Wangari was the first African woman and the first environmentalist to be awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. She was involved in the struggles for human rights, democracy and environmental conservation. She was a true leader in those areas and an absolutely worthy winner of the Nobel Prize. It is the people who must save the environment. It's the people who must make their leaders change. So we must stand up for what we believe in. And we cannot be intimidated. Thank you. I would like now to introduce uh, Marcos Terena, Professor of Traditional and Spiritual Knowledge of the Indigenous People and Coordinator of the International Indigenous Forum on Biodiversity. Good afternoon ever to uh, the audience. I have a mission, uh, the spe a special mission today in the afternoon. I am going to offer honors on behalf of you to a brother, to a sister from Brazil, a f um, woman. I love her. She's a fighter for the Amazonas in Brazil. Margarida is her name. And Margarida in Brazil is also a name of a flower, very beautiful flower. Uh, she works in Brazil. She's an indigenous uh, woman. She protects a region of the Amazon in Brazil and near a big river, which is called Xiu. It's been threatened by the new development mechanisms, and that's been always been the case. And I would like to share this message of a great woman with you, a great woman from Brazil. We often think that a woman might not have power. We indigenous people respect women very much because the woman is the source of life, uh, spiritual life, and she transfer her her knowledge to her children, like balance, the balance of Mother Earth. And uh, you here in Europe and from other people have to think about that, that uh, a voice is not only important, but also the power and intelligence of a woman. And based on that, I would like to invite my sister, Maria Margarida, to come here and to share uh, <clears throat> her knowledge and receive her prize for her work. And uh, there's a Margarita, and I am, have the pleasure to introduce her to you.
this is the award that Mrs. Maria Margarida Ribeiro da Silva will receive. That's a complete name. Wangari, the Wangari Matai Award. Winner in 2017. It's written in English. And I cannot read it. <laughs> so you'll help me. And it's an award that's signed by C4 and also by FAO, GAFI, EUC, and I don't know which name this is, EUFRO also, the Convention for Biological Diversity, again the United Nations, UNEP, UNEP, Agroforestal Center, and the World Bank. Bom dia a todos e a todas. Me chamo Maria Margarida Ribeiro da Silva, liderança comunitário é, da Reserva Extrativista Verde para Sempre, localizado no município de Porto de Mós, no Pará, no Brasil. Hoje é um dia muito orgulhoso para a Amazônia e principalmente para as mulheres que lutam em defesa da floresta. Receber este prêmio para mim é o reconhecimento que a nossa luta está no caminho certo para conservar as florestas e melhorar as qualidades de vida das pessoas que dependem dela. Sinto-me agradecida e emocionada. Valeu a pena todo o esforço, a dedicação, as articulações, as parcerias. É um reconhecimento que não é só meu, é de todo um grupo de manejadores comunitários que lutam diariamente pelo acesso à política pública que garanta o seu direito, esse é um prêmio de todos nós. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Maria Margarida Ribeiro da Silva, community leader of the Verde Para Sempre Extractive Reserve, located in the Porto de Mois in the state of Pará, Brazil. Today is a day of great pride to the Amazon and mainly to the women who fight to defend forests. For me, receiving this award is a recognition that our fight is on the right path to conserve forests and to improve the quality of life of people who depend on them. I feel thankful and moved. All the effort has paid off, the dedication, coordination and partnerships. This award is a recognition not only of my achievements, but of every group of community managers on their daily fight for access to public policies that secure their rights. This award is for all of us. Sou moradora da comunidade Nossa Senhora do Perpétuo Socorro do Rio Arimum, dentro da reserva extrativista Verde para Sempre, a maior reserva extrativista do Brasil, com 1 milhão e 200 mil hectares, maior que o Líbano. A nossa luta na comunidade iniciou em 1998 com a criação da primeira associação comunitária na luta pelo direito da terra e na, na defesa dos rios e florestas. Na época, tivemos o apoio do Sindicato dos Trabalhadores Rurais, da Igreja Católica, os quais foram decisivos na nossa luta, que teve como momento mais marcante o fechamento do rio com nossos barcos de pesca contra as, os madeireiros ilegais. Após esse ato, foi decretado pelo governo brasileiro 
a criação da Reserva Extrativista Verde para Sempre em 2004. I live in the community of Nossa Senhora do Perpétuo Socorro of the Arimum River within the Verde para Sempre Extractive Reserve, the greatest extractive reserve in Brazil with a million and two thousand hectares, an area larger than Lebanon. Our community's fight began in 1998 with the creation of the first community association for securing land rights and the protection of rivers and forests. At that time, we had the support of the Rural Workers' Union and the Catholic Church, which was decisive in our fight. One defining moment was when we used our fishing boats to block the river to stop illegal loggers. After this event, the Brazilian government declared the creation of the Verde para Sempre Extractive Reserve in December 2004. In 2006, we elaboramos a primeira proposta de manejo florestal comunitário para dentro de unidade de conservação, apoiada pelo KFW aqui da Alemanha e através do projeto Pro Manejo em caráter experimental. Pois não havia na legislação brasileira nenhuma lei que assegurasse o direito das populações tradicional. Foi a Brasília dialogar com representantes de órgãos federais e conseguimos aprovar um plano de manejo florestal comunitário para a Resex, o que permitiu que os moradores da nossa reserva pudesse manejar e comercializar madeira de maneira sustentável. Essa primeira experiência fez com que reuníssemos vários parceiros, como Serviço Florestal Brasileiro, IBAMA, Ministério Público, Universidade, ONGs como IEB, GTA, a FASE, o CNS, que nos apoiaram por meio de um grupo de trabalho para desenvolver o manejo comunitário dentro da reserva. Essa nossa experiência piloto serviu de base para a criação da instrução normativa do ICMBio e N16 em 2011, que regulamenta o manejo florestal comunitário dentro de unidade de conservação, na qual tive a oportunidade de colaborar na construção das propostas. In 2006, we developed the first proposal for community forest management within a conservation unit supported by the KFW, a German organization. Because there was no Brazilian legislation that would ensure the rights of traditional populations, this pilot project supported our cause. I went to Brasilia to talk to representatives of federal agencies where we were able to approve a community forest management plan for the reserve. This allowed the residents of our community to manage and commercialize wood in a sustainable way. This first experience allowed us to collaborate with several partners, such as the Brazilian Forest Service, IBAMA, public ministry, universities, NGOs such as IEB, GTA, FASSE, and CNS, who supported us through a working group to develop community management in the reserve. This pilot experience served as a basis for the creation of the normative instruction number 16 of the Chico Mendes Institution uh, for the Conservation of Biodiversity in 2011, which regulates community forest management within a conservation unit in Brazil. I had the opportunity to contribute to the development of this initiative. O nosso trabalho dentro da reserva tem como foco viabilizar o manejo florestal com, com técnica de baixo impacto e permitir que as comunidades gerenciem adequadamente os recursos econômicos do manejo. Nosso trabalho em favor do empoderamento comunitário foi reconhecido em 2016, quando a nossa cooperativa recebeu a certificação FSC. O nosso trabalho ganhou reconhecimento nacional por meio do programa Florestabilidade, produzido pela Fundação Roberto Marinho. Nos episódios do programa voltado para o alunos da rede pública da região amazônica, apresentamos nossas experiências a respeito do uso coletivo sustentável da floresta e sua importância para o planeta. Nosso trabalho tem servido também para apoiar jovens lideranças que participam do Formar Florestal, curso promovido pelo Instituto Internacional de Educação do Brasil, IEB, que permite a lideranças comunitárias reforçar a relevância da floresta para populações amazônicas que residem em áreas de forte pressão sobre os recursos naturais e disputa pelos territoriais. 
Our work in the reserve focuses on enabling forest management with low impact techniques and allowing communities to adequately manage the economic resources resulting from the activities. Our work towards community empowerment was recognized in 2016 when our cooperative received the FSC certification. Our work gained national recognition through the program Florestabilidade, produced by the foundation Roberto Marinho, Several episodes of a TV program aimed at public school students in the Amazon region televised our experience in the collective and sustainable use of forest resources, highlighting its importance to the planet. Our work has also served to support young leaders who participated in the Formar Florestal, a course promoted by the International Institute of Education of Brazil, IEB, uh, which allows community leaders to reinforce the relevance of the forest to the Amazonian populations residing in areas with strong press pressures on natural resources and territorial disputes. Hoje faço parte do observatório do manejo florestal comunitário, um grupo com 14 organizações comunitárias que representam 2.500 famílias de um território do Pará, que juntamente com a instituição de ensino pesquisa e organização não governamentais atuam coletivamente na busca de alternativas que garantam a autonomia das comunidades na gestão dos seus recursos territoriais. Por fim, agradeço a organização do evento pela oportunidade de reconhecimento da temática do manejo florestal comunitário internacionalmente, pois as populações amazônicas carecem de continuidade de apoio, especialmente financeiro para garantir a luta na busca por seus direitos. I am currently a member of the Observatory of Community Forest Management, a group of 14 community organizations representing 2,500 families from 11 territories of the state of Pará. Together with educational and research institutions and non-governmental organizations, we collectively work in pursuing alternatives that ensure autonomy of the communities in the management of their territories. Finally, I would like to thank the organization of the event for the opportunity to internationally recognize the theme of community forest management, as the Amazonian populations lack the continuity of support, especially financial, to guarantee the fight for their rights. Obrigada. Thank you.